Did you guys um, see everything that happened with Pal World last week? Does anyone remember Pal World? Pokemon with guns. Remember when Pal World came out in January and the everyone started going mental being like, oh my god, they look so like Pokemon. All the all of them look so like, look, I'll, I'll show you. If you're new to this, you know what Pokemon look like, but I'll co let's compare them to Pal World. Let's just look at the ones that have some close resemblance. Electabuzz here and this one here. You have this sheep pal and then you have this Pokemon. I don't remember this Pokemon's name, let's be honest. This one, you're kind of just like, uh, is it Luxray? Is it Luxray? Oh, uh, it could be. It could be. You're kind of, if you squinted with your glasses off, you would think they were both Luxray. So that's not good. So Lucario and the Anubis um, pal from Pal Worlds, like, Oh, come on. Come on. It's just a different skin of Lucario. It's basically shiny Lucario at this point. You'd think that that is the reason that they're suing Pal World for, the company who made Pal World. you think that's what they're going after, right? They're going after the likeliness of Pals to Pokemon. No. You'd be wrong. They're coming after them for small patents and they're building up the patents to try and take them down. It's, it's what they technically call patent trolling. That's what they're taking them down for. I'll show you the video. And this is really dangerous. If the Japanese court let this happen and let Nintendo win for this, this is dangerous for every small indie game around the world. But we'll get into that after we watch the video. On today's story actually does matter a lot. Nintendo are suing Pal World, but it's not for the reason that you think. It's not because designs are too similar. It is cold-blooded business. And that is a quote. It's not just the opinion of me, some Westerner who doesn't understand Japanese law trying to pump up the story for you. It's what Serkan Toto called it. So cold-blooded business. Nintendo is, pa Nintendo is patent trolling Pal World because it got too big. This is what's happening. They're literally trying to take the bag away from Pal World because they've really got nothing and they're coming after them for their patents. Cold-blooded business. Now, he runs a game consultancy firm in Japan. He is absolutely seen as a regional expert. He knows what he's talking about. And worse for Pal World developer Pocket Pair, he thinks Nintendo will win. Now, I get it. You may think, I don't play creature collectors. This doesn't matter to me. Well, the bad news is it does. This is a direct threat to what we all enjoy. It is a threat against the entire industry. And it That's the problem. As he said, it's a threat against the entire industry because this court case might set precedent for every other small indie up and coming company. Like if they have the patent for not allowing anyone to do any kind of monster collecting games, then that takes a massive chunk of the market away for everyone else and for any competitors for Nintendo to ever come up. It doesn't matter if they have a complete different system, if they have complete original characters, no AI whatsoever, they're being extremely greedy and they're spoiling the bag for everyone if they let this happen. If past predicts future, Nintendo will almost certainly win because their domestic litigation track record is legendary. Now, I'm sure you know the phrase, if you come for the king, you better not miss. Well, 404 Media spoke to Dr. Toto, and it turns out, to his memory, Nintendo have never lost a litigation that they started. So yes, their lawyers are big brains with big wallets, and you can gear up to beat them with today's sponsor. We first caught whiffs of this months back, whenever the Pokemon company finally responded, and edited for brevity, this is what they said. We have received many inquiries regarding another company's game released in January 2024. Pokemon released this back in, like, March. I think it was in March. We haven't granted permission to use our IP or assets and intend to investigate and take appropriate measures. So they said, we're looking into it, and certainly a little bit chilling. So they didn't actually come out with anything. They said that they were looking into the IP of them using their Pokemon's likeliness, and nothing ever came out of it. So obviously, either the Nintendo company backed down, or 
nothing could be found that broke the patent and copyright on these characters, on these Pokemon. And reading that, we're all thinking the same thing. Did Pocket Pair yoink something? Did they rip a model from Pokemon? Did they kit bash using models from Pokemon? Allegations to that effect were all over the internet. VGC actually spoke to two AAA 3D modelers whenever the Pokemon company released their statement, and they basically said, you cannot in any way, and this is a quote, accidentally get the same proportions on multiple models from another game without ripping the models, or at the very least, tracing them meticulously first. One of those people said they would stand behind their words as an expert witness in court, but more relevant to today, VGC also ran it by an IP lawyer. The IP lawyer said, if proven, that would be a smoking gun. Today's statement from Nintendo and the Pokemon Company is not what we expected because it doesn't talk about copyright infringement for protected designs. Rather, it's about patent infringement. And remember, this is cold. This is business. This is about defeating your foe. So if the spirit of your complaint, say designs being too similar, is a weaker legal argument, well then your extremely expensive lawyers will not make that argument, but they will of course try to achieve your goals. And remember, Nintendo's lawyers are some of the best in the entire industry. Some of the sneakiest in the entire industry, is that what you mean? And they've done easy things like knocking out these Pokemon clones from China, but more recently, we have a scary story. They won $30 million suing Colopil over patent infringement. And that's exactly what we're dealing with here. But what's spooky is the specific patents and how that litigation went down. And this is almost certainly, I believe, what they'll do to Pocket Pair because it seems like it's their playbook. They try to get them in patents. Here's a few of them. Quote, the special technology used to operate a joystick over a touch panel. Another one is a... One of the patents was for a confirmation screen after sleep mode. So when your screen goes blank and they want to make sure that you're still... If you're, if, let's, say, let's just say you're away from your screen for a little bit of time and your screen goes to sleep mode. That's what they're getting PAL World for. These are the things, the small little patents that Nintendo got back in the day, in like the 90s and the early 2000s, and made sure that they had the patents for these specific things that every other game has. Like how many games have a confirmation screen? How many games can you think of off the top of your head that you know have a confirmation screen? I can't think of any game that doesn't have a confirmation screen. Lots of games. Are you sure you want to resume? And then you tap yes or no. Literally, Netflix has that. Like, you know, when you've been watching a, a series for too long and then Netflix hits you with the, are you still watching? Like, you know, you're still here after this long? And you're like, yes, Netflix, I am. Nintendo has the patent on that. So they could actually come after Netflix for that patent if they wanted to. So these are the small things that Nintendo is taking the company for. Confirmation screen appearing whenever you resume a game from sleep mode. Dr. Toto summed up the others. He said this, quote, and they have five other ones, including one for isometric, pseudo, 3D games. When the character is hidden behind a tree, the game forms a shadow so you have a sense for where your character is, even though you don't see your character clearly. Just ban trees, paint and trees. Take the trees. Take the trees. Have them. You want them? Take the trees. Because that is ridiculous. Imagine taking a company to court because you can see the character in the game behind the tree. Wow. Well done. Well, well done, Nintendo. Way to use the justice system for what it's used for. Well done. Great company. Do you know what Nintendo reminds me of? Have you ever seen Robin Hood? You know, the guy in it that steals the coins from the little rabbit boy? It's the sheriff. Hurry, hide it, quick. Here I come, ready or not. They're taking the bag from all of the small companies. If they smell threat, they will come for you and shut you down. They're like the sheriff. They're like the sheriff in Robin Hood stealing money from the poor little kids. Oh boy, one whole farley. Do you know what's really funny? World of Warcraft just added that. So many games have that. You're playing an isometric game, you walk behind a tall building, but you still see where your character is. Yet that is something Nintendo actually used. 
They do hold those patents, but many would say those patents are so broad and industry standard that they're invalid. And that actually is a defense in Japan. It's one that, in this case, the defendant made. They said that Nintendo's patents lacked novelty and inventiveness. Go on, lads. Valid, so broad that they're essentially meaningless. And this is where the story gets chilling. Nintendo didn't have to win. Colable ended up having to settle. The settlement is, of course, a mutual agreement between both companies to come to terms and stop the legal fight. But It's not that they came to terms. Obviously, this company did not have the money that Nintendo has to continue this legal battle because what a lot of companies do is if they have so much money, they can just continue to bring the case back to court. And companies can't afford to do this. It, like it's some, Sometimes you hear like in law, even if you win, you lose because the amount of money that you have to pay in court uh, fees and paying your lawyers and miss time and paying everyone else at the company when you're still trying to pay for these lawyers, you have to settle. And this is what Nintendo has done because they're snakes. Make no mistake, Nintendo were not the losers here. And it's worse than that. The settlement involves Colopil having to pay Nintendo a licensing fee for those patents. Now, by the law of the land, Nintendo did not prove their patent claim, as far as my understanding goes. Yet, even though they didn't prove that legally, they successfully strong-armed their target into number one, giving up a lot of money, and number two, into a licensing deal for those patents that many would argue are invalid by the law of Japan. But again, that argument did not get fully borne out in the court. We don't have a legal decision. And that's the thing. The legal system is supposed to uphold the law, but here, the system was the weapon and the law didn't exactly matter. Yeah. World then. Nintendo's filings are not public. That means we do not know what patents they're using. The people over at Pocket Pair also don't know, but here's a Nintendo example that's... If I'm reading this correctly, here's a Nintendo patent for 2021 for video game characters throwing an item to catch a monster while in the field. Oh, so that is ridiculous. Ridiculous. That is ridiculous. So if you try to throw anything in a game that even resembles slightly the coding that is used or the image on screen, then you're done. You're done. You could be done for copyright and patent infringement. Stephen Totillo found in the US Patent Office, and there is crossover between the US and Japanese Patent Offices. You can see this amazing art. Throwing an item to catch a monster, we see some WikiHow tier uh, art of it. We see a flow chart. And look, if it was Pal World, the pterosaur would absolutely be holding an AK, but uh, I don't think that detail is going to help Pocket Pal. So let's talk about their response. Big Winston once said, never let a good crisis go to waste. And while well, Pocket Pair are leveraging their biggest asset here, their community. And look, like it or not, whether you think a big rat creature with an AK is an artistically cohesive thing or not, the truth is that Pal World happened in a world where most of my generation loved Pokemon as kids and then drifted away from the franchise over a continued lack of innovation and pretty damn scummy business practices that just- And that's why I stopped playing Pokemon. I was one of the biggest Pokemon fans. Like, my first game that I ever played was Pokemon Yellow when I was four years old. Like, I remember getting it. I literally remember getting it in 1999. I stopped because I felt like the Pokemon were just becoming... After 2013, after black and white, I felt, one, there was too much Pokemon. Two, it was the same thing over and over and over again. Like the same formula. Like I don't mind if the formula is good. The formula was good, but it was just getting too repetitive. And I feel like the creativity had got out the window. Like why did Pokemon start becoming so humanoid? It was ridiculous. Does anyone agree with me? Like I liked the Pokemon when they looked like animals. They looked like turtles and they looked like bugs and they look like fish, and they look like dragons. That's what I wanted. I didn't want this rabbit that looked like a human and looked really weird and creepy. Like, who wants that? That looks just so weird. And who wants this thing that you're wondering why the fan base really like it? I'm looking at you, Gardevoir. You poor, defenseless creature. And what they did to you. Like, come on so bad.
And that's why I stopped with the with playing Pokemon. I did get Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and I did play it on stream. But for a 2023 Pokemon game, that's like what? Generation 10? For the quality of the game to be that low and the level of the openness of the world to be that empty, I wanted something on par with Tears of the Kingdom or Breath of the Wild. I wanted everything to be interactable. Everything. But it was empty, boring, and just void. It was just useless. And I wasn't here for it, honestly. And there was already so many cases coming out about Nintendo being such a scummy company and everything they'd done, even suing a dude in Canada for having a Pokemon-themed party. Like, there's no way that I can justify giving money to a franchise that's going to do stuff like that because they don't deserve it. Just about nobody else is able to get away with. In that context, PAL World captured attention and it used extremely sticky and battle-tested game mechanics, base building, collecting, automation to hold on to people. That does mean the community actually likes them by and large. And so in this situation, they absolutely are David, and the rocks in their sling are the community. Let's talk about their statement. They start by reinforcing that they're small, how Pal World succeeded with the community, and they end with the, the real message. Quote, It is truly unfortunate that we will be forced to allocate significant time to matters unrelated to game development due to this lawsuit. However, we will do our utmost for our fans and to ensure that indie developers are not hindered or discouraged from pursuing their creative ideas. And that's like just before he says anything else, but that is the point. That's the thing. Like, they represent the little guy. They represent everything that Nintendo is trying to take away. Like, as he said, it's like David going up against Goliath. Come for them for their pals. Come for them for that. Like, I can sit here and be like, yeah, you kind of lost the patent for that. Let's, let's be real. They do kind of look alike. Like, you can't sit here and say that some of them aren't complete and utter rip-offs. Like, they should have done it a little bit better than that. But, like, coming for them for patent trolling is just so unprofessional. I think that's the problem that I can't get around. It's the unprofessionalism of Nintendo to, like, punch down. And the only reason they're punching down is because Pal World is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And they want to snuff them out before it's too late for them and they get any bigger than they already are. Because Pal Worlds is a company that had potential. And potential is what scares Nintendo. Because they have absolutely zero innovation in 2024 really the thing. This is just the beginning. This is a battle that will take years because it's legal and that's how it goes. Palworld, though, is not just a small indie company. That's where Sony actually entered the picture. So a few months back, Pocket Power announced a joint venture with Sony Music Entertainment and wow. called Aniplex. Basically, right? Aniplex! Rocketed poke. Aniplex? Aniplex is the anime company. Aniplex, you know, Aniplex. That one. And Sony... They want to make an anime. What? Oh my god. Just imagine something like Jujutsu Kaisen or Chainsaw Man, but Pokemon. So like there's guts and crap going everywhere and mad machine guns being taken out from pals in the sky. And then you're just eating your little pal guys openly. Oh my days. That would be so cool. I'd buy. Pokemon and got, you know, the Chin Pokemon episode of South Park. They want to exploit the Pal World IP outside of video games, through anime, through music, probably a card game, and everything you could imagine. And that's what makes me wonder here. Do Nintendo see this as a threat? They do. A threat now, because I think Pal World is appealing to different people. As I said, the threat is the potential of Pal World and the company people than just the core Pokemon experience as it is currently. But if you look at the likes of Arceus, you do actually see that yeah, while Arceus was rightly la Terrible game. laughed at for its visual presentation, it actually did innovate the gameplay and it was way better than any of the other modern Pokemon games for sure. So there may be thinking, while well, we want to innovate and push Pokemon forward, maybe Pal World is going to muscle in on that turf. And they've also realized something. 
PAL world was scrappy. It was an indie. When you hear about the development, it does seem like a little bit of a technical shit show. But that's the thing. It will only get better and stronger from here. And now it has got proper corporate backing with those joint venture agreements. So for Nintendo, if they see a rival brand to Pokemon, would they not rather kill it where it is now when it's small? And here's where I want to be clear. Every game developer should be against this. And I know that within the industry, many think that Pocket Pair are, in a way, creative hacks who couldn't even bother making their own in-universe version of a gun. They just grabbed an AK or an AR from an asset store and slapped it onto a pocket monster. It worked! That doesn't actually matter now. That doesn't matter. What matters is this dangers us all, and it's something that's happened before. It is common understanding the game mechanic. This is what I talk about. It's dangerous because if they set precedents in court for this to happen, then it can totally destroy the small gaming industry and for any small companies to even dream of getting to the size of the massive AAA companies like Nintendo and Bethesda. Like, they'll stand no chance cannot be copyrighted. Exact implementation can be, but not in broad strokes. You can't go and patent the Metroidvania format. I mean, we used to call what's now the FPS a Doom clone. And yeah, if you're newer, you may not know that, but in the 90s, it wasn't necessarily FPS. It was Doom clone. What? So FPS games come from Doom. That's wild. I didn't know that. You learn something new every day. But the idea of a first-person shooter is not something that id could go and copyright. But specific mechanics, well, those can be patented. And that's because copyright protects the usage of the things that you've designed or wrote, and patents are designed to protect mechanical inventions or processes. The whole point there being that if you actually make an innovation, the patent system protects your ability to exploit that, and in doing so, it creates a financial incentive for people to innovate. The thing is, though, if a patent is too broad, it can become impossible to reproduce without infringement. Facts. And that's where broad patents are a problem. And this hurts you. I would actually say it has hurt you. You just don't know it because we cannot see the road not taken. Wolfstein was first, but Doom made it popular. What's it called in marketing? Tailcoat Company. So they rode the tailcoat of Wolfstein, but did it better and became more popular, i.e. Instagram, MySpace. The Lord of the Rings, Shadow of Mordor's nemesis system was such a good game. Honestly, it led to emergent gameplay within that game that actually saw people forgetting about the core. Sick game. Love that game. In the sandbox, settling scores with orcs. It was fun, it was dynamic, and it was a relationship with our enemies in the game that was actually player driven. But Warner Bros. patented it. And of course they did. He's got past that patent. And that means that one of the 2010's greatest innovations in gaming is locked. Locked within one of the worst publishers. So if you're a triple A game or a double A, you probably don't want the risk. What if you're an indie though? Well, will a publisher pick you up and fund you? No. Nope. Knowing that an American megacorp could just attack you. No. Nope. You're a self-funded indie. Well, what are the chances that you drop your trailer after working in secret for two years, your trailer catches on, and just before release, you get served with something by Warner Bros. And even worse, this chilling effect means that we're not seeing the next version of the Nemesis system, the next iteration or innovation along those lines. That's the thing. Nintendo is a bad actor here. They are, in my opinion anyway, using overly generic patents, not as a true attack vector, but rather as a mind-controlling parasite. Because this doesn't seem to be about winning the legal case. Yeah. It seems more an excuse to pick up the legal system and to harness it to maul your opponent to death. Yeah. Regardless of what a trial verdict may be. Yeah. Because as we just saw, well, they can pull you into a settlement that is amazingly favorable to them. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, that's the sad truth about it at the end of the day. Like, it doesn't really matter if Nintendo win or lose the case. They have so much money that they can pull you into a settlement, as he says, and just make sure that your company is absolutely, completely, and utterly just locked and can continue to make the game or anything, which is really sad. And it destroys creativity. It destroys new games. It destroys any kind of 
arse and inclusion. And it drives me mad. It drives me actually crazy that this is what's happening. So if you could do anything, if I if I've if I've said anything to you in this, it's Nintendo are absolute see you next Thursdays.